Welcome to this Google Sites screencast where we're looking at how to communicate and share resources using your new staff website. Specifically, in this screencast, we're going to show you how to set up your site from a pre-created template and also how to set the sharing and viewing rights for that site. So here I am at tinyurl.com slash FranklinEdTech. I'm working on the very first lesson page here, lesson 2.1 and working down uh, before you actually go and use these templates there are some samples here if you want to click through these samples and kind of take a look at some at an elementary sample a middle school sample a high school or middle school sample and a specifically high school sample just to kind of get a sense for what we're doing once you're ready to move on the first step is to click on this purple button that says click here to access templates this will open a list of the franklin templates that are available by school and if you're a staff member um, and you work primarily in one building, you can you can use those templates as well. Uh, otherwise, if you're a traveling teacher, we did set up this Franklin Public Schools generic template. If you know if you're a traveling staff member, you don't have to have more than one site. That's not the goal here. Um, if you want to choose just a blank Franklin Public Schools uh, template, that's what that site is for there. So I'm going to go through as a Forest Park Middle School teacher. And here's the template. When you get here, if you're not signed into your account, uh, they might ask you to sign in or there might be a sign in button up here. You want to be signed into your account. And in order to use this template, you have to click the blue use this template button. So I'm going to click use this template. Here it's telling me I'm using the FPMS template. When you name your site, very important, name it first with the two letters of your building. So if I'm working at Forest Park, I'm going to put an FP. If I'm working at the high school, I'm going to put an HS or Ben Franklin, BF, Countrydale CD, Pleasant View PV, Southwood Glen, or Robinwood. So we'll do FP here. You can do FP and then a space and then put your staff name. And the reason for that is um, nobody really sees the name of the site. This is just when they get cataloged, they'll be cataloged by building. And as tech coaches help you with your site, uh, it'll be a lot easier to find when we search those out. So FP space, your name. I'm actually going to put a number here for this example because I've done this a few times. And I'm going to hit create. So what it's doing now is it's taking that template and it is creating an exact duplicate for me to work with. And that'll open here as my Google site. So here's my site. The basics when you're editing your site are your tools are up here on the right side. The little pencil, this is the edit tool. Make this a little bigger here. So if I want to edit anything on this page, this is the page here, this this kind of center to right area. A uh, later video will show you how to edit the navigation and the other links area that's, that's separate from this. If I click the little pencil though, this will let me edit Notice it changes where I see my tools now. This is kind of like editing a document. Any of these little boxes are where I can place my cursor and begin editing. So if I wanted to change this to Mr. Kafka's website, and I might change this little blurb here, write a little introductory. I might put a picture here. I'll show you how to do that later. Uh, if I want to start typing in my bell schedule, and again, good idea if you teach in a building where there's class hours, it's a good idea afterwards to put the actual minutes that it takes place for your audience, your parents, your students, or if there's support staff looking to contact you at a certain time, it helps to have both that information in there. So that's the edit. If I go up and I click save, those changes are now on my site. So edit, save, edit, save. Very important to know that workflow. Okay, the last part we want to do here during this first part of the video or per first part of the training is come up here to the share button. When you create a site, a site is inherently private to you. So if I mouse over this, it says it's private. We're going to go into the share area and we're going to do two things in here. When we go into share, the first thing we're going to do is under this add people, we're going to add the Franklin Tech account. So if you start typing Franklin Tech, you should see it come up. Franklin Tech at franklin.k12.wi.us. Go ahead and click on that so that address is added in there. You're going to give the Franklin Tech account ownership rights, and this is so that if any tech coaches or tech people have to help you with your site, this is going to put all staff sites in one place so that uh, tech coaches, library media, tech integrators, we can help with those. So I'm adding Franklin Tech. I'm changing this to owner. And then uncheck this box that says notify by email. If you do not uncheck this box, you're going to get a bounce back email um, because this, this account doesn't really have email set up. So be sure to uncheck that just so it doesn't send you a weird message. And I'm going to hit share and save. 
So once I do that, it says I'm skipping an email notification. That's OK. So I'm going to click OK. So now you should see, just like when sharing a Google document, you should see Franklin Tech now has rights to this site as well. OK, so that's the first thing. The second thing is, like we said, all sites are private. So anyone, only these people right now can see the site. If you want to during this first step, or you could do this way at the end of, of working on your site, I'm, I'm suggesting it now because it's really um, just a step that needs to be done. But if you do it at the end, that's totally fine. You want to change this from private. Come over here and click change. So change this from private to anyone with the link. And you want to make sure anyone with the link can view. So what this is doing is this is allowing if anyone goes to the address, and I'm going to click save here to make sure this change takes effect. If anyone goes to your address, which is this, this long address, uh, they would be able to see your site. Now you might be thinking, well, I haven't worked on my site yet. There's nothing there. That's fine. That, that, that's how you control who gets to see it. It's only people that you send the link to. Um, but again, a good step to set that now as you build your site, you know, you'll make changes and such. Otherwise, you could do this at the end. There is a checkoff list at the end uh, to make sure that that is set correctly so people can see your site. And there's also an optional video later that shows you how to take this and make a tiny URL if you want to make a very simple address to direct people to. I encourage you to watch that. That's under the uh, extras and the advanced videos later. So I'm all done in this area. I'm going to click on the name of my site here to get back to the front area where I can then go on and continue editing. And you can move on to the next lesson. And in those videos, we'll show you how to do some very specific things with adding images uh, and, ed and editing other parts of your site. Thanks for watching.